can't, I don't want to grow up, really. I mean, I want to grow up, but like, I don't want to rush things. I'm having, I, I can, right now I'm doing fine. One time I was going with this guy and I wanted to go someplace. My mom wouldn't let me go, so I, like I'm saying to myself, I wish if I was older, then I could go where I wanted to. Mm. And then, you know, you figure, well, forget it. You might as well stay young as long as you can. Mm. Don't rush your you life. You have a long way to go. Right. When Take I your was, time. When I was younger, I always did want to grow up. I used to say, I can't wait till I get 16. Can't wait mm -hmm. till I get 16. My cousins get to do things because they're boys, and they get to go places at nighttime, and then I, they leave me in the house, and I ask, and I go. But they say no because I, they said that I was, because I was younger and I was a girl. There's this guy that was going with this girl and then he wanted to go with me. So he broke up with her, he went with me, and then he broke up with me and went back to the other girl. <laughs> and I was really, really upset. I was so depressed. I started crying. Guys, our age, they do all kinds of weird yeah. things. Uh, <laughs> they, don't know what they're gonna, they have so many different feelings. They don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah but you, not, most of the guys aren't mature enough. And, we really aren't mature enough to know what we're going to do either. Yeah. Just do it, you know? Sometimes you wish you were flat-chested. Sometimes you wish you weren't, you know? And then there's sometimes when you wish you're glad you are because the guys, they look at you for that reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when I started developing, I, I was happy. It was a new experience. Like, you can talk to the guys sometimes if they're really good yeah. friends. Yeah. But, you know, you can't talk to them the same things as girls. Yeah. Well, it depends on guys. Like, if you have a really good friend of a guy, like, you'll talk about him lots of stuff. Uh-huh. I know, but if it's a guy you like, you know, you're not going to talk about that. Like, I'm developing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Growing up from girl to woman, there's so much to get used to. This is the time when a whole new set of feelings unfolds. Feelings about yourself and boys and your maturing body. A time of change. One of the changes is a speed up in the rate of growth. However, two girls the same age may have very different timetables. One is just starting her growth spurt, while the other started two years ago. Some girls begin adolescence at nine or ten years. Others, as late as 15 or 16. These girls are both age 10. Now 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. At 16, one is physically mature. The other still has years to grow. Both are perfectly normal. Because boys, on the average, mature later than girls, some girls will be taller for a while than many boys their age. Who would you rather go with a guy that's taller than you or shorter? Taller. taller. I'd be. Okay. Yeah. Well, it depends on if you love, love or like a guy that's shorter than you, then it doesn't matter. And if you love or like a guy that's taller than you, well, that's right. She won't, you, know. <laughs> you see? But yeah, yeah, but you know, a guy that's like a whole bunch taller than you, like, like a basketball like player. About, right, a, a basketball yeah. player. Right. He's this tall, and you, you know, much taller. But you talk about people that's around about three inches shorter three inches than you. Short. No. Yeah. Because I've seen people that, you know, going with other people that are midgets. I mean, you know, really small. <laughs> Some people mind not being the same size and shape as most of their friends. If you're one of those, take heart. You're perfectly normal. In three or four years, differences in height and size and shape will be much less than during adolescence. Another change that happens at adolescence is in the skin. There are glands in the skin that produce perspiration over most of the body when you exercise or when you get hot. These sweat glands begin working at birth and go on working all your life. 
But at adolescence, a different kind of sweat gland begins to work. These new glands work much more when you're nervous, tense, or afraid. They're concentrated in the body in a few places, for instance, under the arms. Perspiration from these glands may have a strong odor. You'll probably need to bathe or shower more often than before adolescence, and also to change your clothes more frequently. The condition called acne is another of the changes in the skin that sometimes occurs at adolescence. Here is a drawing showing a cross-section of the skin. There are countless glands in the skin called sebaceous glands. Each one opens into a hair follicle, the channel from which a hair grows. A sebaceous gland produces an oily substance that passes up the hair follicle to the skin's surface. When a girl reaches adolescence, these glands increase the production of oil, much more in some people than in others. Also during adolescence, the skin begins to grow more rapidly and here and there will obstruct some of the openings. The oily material mixed with particles of skin clogs and hardens, forming a plug. When the plug remains, it darkens and becomes what we know as a blackhead. Since the sebaceous gland continues to produce oil, it may eventually cause the hair follicle to break. The skin becomes red and swollen, and finally a small infection may start. Multiply this several times, and you have acne. The best way to keep acne under control is by washing thoroughly with a mild soap and warm water two or three times a day. This removes oil and helps to clear pores that are beginning to plug. Sometimes doctors recommend special soaps to help remove the oil from the skin. If you have acne, there's one other thing you can do to help it. Be healthy. Sounds a little too slow? Try this. Eat good food. Get plenty of rest. Get lots of exercise. When you're healthy, your skin is healthy. Try it. All of these outer changes in height and figure and skin are indications of profound inner changes that have been going on for two or three years. A girl is started on the way to womanhood by the action of this small gland at the base of the brain, the pituitary. It is a sort of growth clock that sets off a signal in different girls at different ages. The pituitary gland sends out a special hormone that causes the reproductive organs to develop. As the ovaries grow, they begin to produce other hormones. It's these new hormones that bring about various changes in the body during the next few years. The breasts develop, body hair appears, most noticeably under the arms and in the pubic region, and hips grow broader. The most important changes, however, are those in the reproductive system. Only a few of the parts are at the surface of the body. The labia, the soft folds that cover the inner organs, the hymen or maidenhead, a ring of tissue that frequently but not always extends around the entrance to the vagina, and the clitoris, a small, highly sensitive organ. This opening is the urethra, the tube leading from the urinary bladder. Although it has its outlet here, it's not part of the reproductive system. 
The vagina is the canal that leads to the actual organs of reproduction. These organs are the uterus, or womb, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. Under the influence of the hormones, all of the inner organs have been developing along with breasts and hips, getting ready. Part of this gradual change happens in the ovaries, where thousands of eggs, or ova, have been developing. At last, one of them is released. During the next few days, it moves along the fallopian tube toward the uterus. Meanwhile, the walls of the uterus prepare to receive and nourish the ovum if it should be fertilized. The lining gets thicker and the blood supply increases. When the egg is not fertilized, the extra lining discharges from the body along with some blood. This discharge, menstruation, begins about two weeks after the ovum leaves the ovary. It usually lasts from three days to a week or even more. Menstrual or monthly periods usually happen about every four weeks. However, they are likely to be quite irregular for the first two or three years while a girl is still maturing. And later, a cycle of perhaps five weeks or of three weeks is perfectly normal. It takes time to get used to the changes of adolescence, which at first may seem so strange. However, for many girls, Menstruation brings no problems and little discomfort, only the extra care needed for cleanliness. The best way to prevent ordinary mild menstrual cramps is just plain good health, plenty of sleep, and plenty of the kind of exercise that you are used to. By this normal cycle, the organs are repeatedly prepared for bearing a child. The development of a baby begins when an ovum encounters sperm during the first day or two. Let's trace the path by which sperm arrive from the sexual organs of the male. Here is the penis, and here are the testicles, the parts outside the body. From each testicle, a duct leads into the body where it joins the urethra, the tube leading from the bladder through the penis. Each testicle is packed with tubes. The walls of these tubes are lined with special cells. When a boy reaches adolescence, they begin to grow and develop into the male sex cells called sperm or spermatozoa. Millions of sperm develop in a short time since this growth happens constantly along more than a mile of tubes contained within the testicles. The millions of sperm are moved along, filling other coiled tubes and the duct leading into the body. Fluid from certain glands mixes with the sperm. The sperm-filled fluid is called semen. In preparation for passing the sperm, the penis becomes congested with blood and erect. Muscular contractions force the semen into the urethra and out of the body. It is nature's way of passing the male sperm into the female vagina during sexual intercourse.
Here are the live sperm shown under a microscope. They are able to propel themselves by lashing their long tails. Within a short time after intercourse, sperm in the vagina propel themselves through the uterus and into the fallopian tubes. If the sperm meets an ovum, one of them will penetrate the ovum wall and fertilize it. Now, when a fertilized ovum reaches the uterus, it embeds itself in the wall that is prepared for it. The growth of the baby begins. But before a girl becomes a woman, she will need to mature fully. She will need time to get used to all the changes. Changes in her body, in her feelings. There are new sexual feelings, new feelings about boys, new uncertainties, and new joys. It takes time to get to all the changes. It takes time.